Hey guys, what's up? In this video, we're going to be looking at how to make a, a JavaScript library, like a framework similar to something like um, jQuery, the way they do it, um, to where you can have a uh, either powerful library like jQuery or something a lot smaller that's more uh, specific to one thing. In this uh, example, we're going to start off very, very small and basic so it doesn't get confusing. I have a directory structure here of a website and my static file, here's my JavaScript folder. So since um, the library is going to be JavaScript, we're going to obviously put it in there. So the first things first, I'm going to create a JavaScript file. And this will be the name of the, fr the uh, framework that I'm building. I'm just going to call it Bayside for reasons I'll explain later on. And uh, inside this folder, what we need to do is um, we need to say function. And this means that it's going to execute as soon as the page loads. Um, or as soon as the document inside the page loads. All right, and um, JavaScript has a feature where you can say use strict, and the only other language I've ever seen this in is um, is Perl because you can write some very ugly, sloppy code that um, does crazy things without expecting or without knowing uh, that you've done that. Um, Perl lets lets you do it, so there's a strict mode to prevent certain things like. Um, accessing undeclared variables. So JavaScript has the same built-in pr protections now with um, the latest uh, version of JavaScript version, uh, ECMA script 5. So we can say use script or use strict at the top. So after we use our um, strict statement there, what I want to do is I want to create a function which is going to be the function that gets called anytime this document loads and there isn't a global variable by the name of our framework already created, and this function will be executed to go ahead and create that gro global variable so that we can access the Bayside framework similar to jQuery uh, within any sort of page that has uh, jQuery included in it. So um, the same concept here, um, what we're going to do is just say function and we'll say define Bayside, open and close parenthesis, and then open curly brace. Inside here, we're going to create just one um, one method on our library, and it's just going to be a simple alert message for testing. So we'll say Bayside, and the name of the the function that you'll call is alert, and that's going to equal a function. Open and close brackets, and then the function is simply just going to say this is a test message from the Bayside framework. And in case you're interested, um, Bayside, the name of the framework is going to be named after uh, one of my favorite rock bands, which is named Bayside from New York City. So in this function here, um, you can see that define Bayside, when it gets called, it returns a Bayside object. So that's all this function does. And inside that Bayside object, it, it declares a method that you can call, which is Bayside alert, and that will call and, and execute this alert statement here. All right, so let's go ahead and add to this. And we want to say when this uh, document loads and when it's executed, we're going to say if type of Bayside equals, and JavaScript has this crazy three um, equal sign equal statement which is uh, drives me crazy but anyway um, equals undefined then we're gonna go ahead and instantiate it so we'll say window dot Bayside equals and then we just call the define Bayside method that we just created so what this is doing is whenever it loads if the Bayside isn't in the global variable a global namespace meaning it hasn't been declared yet and it equals uh, undefined it's going to go ahead and instantiate the Bayside object and it does that here by calling this method. All right, after the squiggly brace, let's go ahead and um, close this off. And we're going to say window. All right, and that's it. That is the entire library. So now in order to be able to use this library, we have this Bayside JavaScript folder or file and um, we need to go ahead and include that into our HTML and hopefully you know how to include a JavaScript file, but um, you can see that I have, I'm using a, um, a Django web framework 
So this is just specific to Django, but you just add the source where your file can be found. Django has a shortcut where I can say static um, JS and then base side dot JS. Okay, I'm going to upload this to my web server so that we can test it. So I've uploaded it to my web server and let's go ahead and just view the page source and see if, if we can find it here. And this is actually out of date. Let me see, I'm going to try to re refresh this. Alright, so when we view the page source of the website here, you can see that it's including the base side JavaScript and we should be able to see that our code that we just created is available. All right, so now that we know that it is available, let's go ahead and um, and call that that framework. So I'm simply just going to do a script statement right here, and all I'm going to do is say base dot alert, and you can see my editor finds it for me. And these have the open and close parenthesis and close that off. And if everything goes well, when we load this page, we'll see that alert message. All right, so let's go ahead and refresh this. Yeah, one of the things I actually forgot to do was um, up here at the top, we need to actually instantiate the variable uh, base side here. So that was uh, completely silly of me to forget that, but if we go ahead and upload it and we try this on our uh, website here, we can see that the test message from the base side framework is, is working. So Whenever, so after we've done that, uh, any sort of functions that you want to exist, I mean, they can exist outside of the base space, uh, base side namespace. Um, so you could have like a function like add and it adds two numbers and returns it. And, and this function can be called by, you know, something inside like the base side alert. Uh, if you want to add additional messages, you could say like base side dot find web page or something like that and they're going to each going to equal a uh, function and the function can take parameters and uh, but that's that's essentially it I mean the frameworks are going to get a lot more complicated the, the more stuff you try to do with it but um, that is all it takes to actually getting a library and JavaScript and being able to access it throughout your web page and just to make sure you guys can um, see how we used it you can see that um, I actually did uh, wrap this in a document dot ready, but it, it shouldn't even be necessary. We can actually just have it sitting inside just a regular uh, script. You can see base side alert is being called, and any other function that you create, you would just call it the same way. And like I said, if you needed to pass in a parameter, you can do that. And just to show you that the document dot ready shouldn't matter, it works the same way without the document dot ready. Alright guys, um, thanks for watching. That's how you create a JavaScript library. Thank you. Bye.